back to the channel today i'm working on the charger and i'm happy to say that i finally have figured out this whole air duct situation so i'm going to put all the part numbers in the description but these are hellcat specific ducts and pretty much or air guides somebody said they're called air guides but whatever it's it's channeling air it's a duct so we have these two up here which this one just is kind of a fascia to that air duct that goes into the intake but unlike the scat pack in the other cars these have a two-piece design on each side so i wasn't sure what these were because i already had them in the last video and i didn't know how they went because i didn't have the upper pieces after i got the upper pieces it was like oh this is exactly how these go put the upper pieces in clip those in and these ones clip into the bottom of this radiator um it's it holds the radiator up and then uh there's a clip under this air duct right here and then there's a clip that goes in between them to hold them nice and tight which this is really what i wanted i didn't want a bunch of air being able to go past the radiator which uh you know it would have so that's uh, nice that that's done. So what I'm gonna do now is throw the bumper on and pretty much button all this stuff up. We have the headlights all the way bolted in and uh, she's gonna be pretty nice. I can't figure out what I'm gonna do about that duct on that side. I might actually modify that before I throw the bumper on. So let's figure that out. Slipped on the driver's air duct and the reason I did that was to see where I need to cut it. So it's not gonna be much, but as you can see the inner chiller, really it's not gonna do much. It's not funneling air through a cooler. It's just funneling air from the front of the bumper into the wheel well. So it's just a complete system and it's not just a bunch of air getting caught because this car does, it's gonna do 200 plus miles an hour. And I don't wanna worry about you know, air getting caught in a spot underneath the fender well and not having anywhere to go because that's drag. So all I need to do is back there, you can see where the AC lines are and I just need to use the hot knife and make a little notch so the cooler or so this duct will fit over those lines and then still clip into this right here. Something I've also been concerned about fixing on the charger before I get this thing 100% assembled is this headlight gap. So this is an issue and I've seen it on forums that there's always this gap right here and a lot of people can't figure out how to get rid of it. So I thought that the bumper was actually pushed too far um, you know, too far out and it just needed to come in like this, but that's not the case. What I ended up finding out was I spaced the core support out with some washers, which was a real pain, but I got the core support spaced out and it actually fits a lot better. So what I'm gonna end up doing is making some actual spacers that go in there instead of washers. So you need some spacers there. And what I'm doing, I think it's a quarter inch. I'll have to measure it when I'm done, but uh, there's spacers that go in here on both sides. And then there is a spacer that goes down here on both sides. And once you do that, it spaces the core support out. And then you can see that these line up, see the bumper isn't all the way up. These holes line up a lot better because they didn't line up at all before unless you push the bumper in super hard to get them to clip in and then it was just kind of a pain. So what I'm gonna do is go make those spacers and then we'll come back, pull the bumper off, put the new spacers in, adjust the headlights where they need to be, clip everything in and we should have a perfect gap and there won't be that awful gap around the headlights anymore, which I'm gonna be very excited about.
had a bunch of iterations of this spacer that I'm trying to get the core support to come out. And I did a quarter inch, then I did an eighth inch. It was too much, but I went to Big R and got two of these washers and it's like perfect. So what you wanna see is right here, this bracket underneath the core support. It's all the way at the end. So when it was, when there's no spacers, it's all the way towards the back. And as you can see here, this is more center than it was before because it's all the way to the back. And what that does is it pushes the core support out, which pushes the headlights out, and then it makes it a lot easier to clip the bumper in as well as I'm gonna put some spacers on, I'm gonna put two spacers, the same amount, on the outside edge of the headlight just to push that headlight side out and then I'll have to adjust the projector. But this is really the only way I have seen a bunch of chargers that have this weird gap. And I think it's just hit and miss with the welding machine at the factory, if it welds it correctly or not. So hopefully, you know, it doesn't come back. I really don't think it will. So I'm gonna put all this stuff back together, get the bumper permanently on there or temporarily permanently on there. I also modified this duct down here for the inner chiller. So all I did was I cut out that section and I had it come out around this hose for the AC system. So um, there, I guess, not supposed to be a duct on here, but I just didn't want air not being funneled into the fender liner because doing 200 miles an hour, that'd be a lot of air building up from that vent. And we just have, you know, I don't want to have any issues with the fender liner or any of that stuff. So this way it makes it a lot better because it'll funnel that air there. And then I'm already getting air intake from the front of the grill as well as the hood. And then whatever gets pushed up from this will also, I actually might block that off because it's getting air. Well, actually it wouldn't be. So now it'll be getting fresh air before um, it would be getting hot air because the cooler would be warming that air up. Got the bumper lined up on the charger, but got it lined up as good as I think it's gonna get. So there still is kind of a gap right here, but I'm hoping the fender liner when it's on there, it kind of pulls it in. Another thing up here, as you can see, these holes actually line up now. Before they weren't lining up, you couldn't actually put a push pin in there or one of these little clips. You had to push the bumper up super hard and then it just kind of, it was very difficult. So now, and another thing, the headlights weren't flush with a grill. They actually were recessed. Now I have two spacers behind the headlight, two spacers behind the core support. So it pushes it out. And then all the tabs on the fender to the core support actually are more in the center than all the way back. So hopefully all of that is gonna pretty much take care of itself once everything's put together with the fender liner. I really am annoyed by that gap on the headlight. There's no way to adjust it out. I was almost thinking about drilling out the headlights so I could push them further out. But then this gap right here will get super big and I think it'll just look shoddy. So hopefully, like I said, that fixes itself once everything is put together. But I'm really happy that I finally have all the ducting figured out with this thing. It took a lot of work to figure it out and a lot of ordering just random parts. So back here, you can see the duct for the intake and it goes right here. And then there's that air box, the red eye air box goes into it or it goes into the red eye air box. And then we have all the ducting to seal off the radiator from the, you know, the outside openings on the top and then on the bottom, which is really nice. And then we have the duct for the oil cooler and we have the kind of Fox duct for the uh, inner chiller. So it just pretty much pumps the air into the air box and out to the wheel well, which is really nice. And I'm pretty excited about it. So hopefully I can get the rear subframe finished. I should be able to get that done within the next, I would say in the next couple days, because I just need to pretty much button up a few suspension pickup points that my friend is gonna, or a guy that I'm paying is gonna weld it up. And uh, then I could powder coat it. Then we can put the coilovers on subframe, Trackhawk div, trackhawk axles, all the trackhawk suspension. And then we'll also, I've really been wanting to put this on. Magnaflow sent me an exhaust a very long time ago, but since I've been building the subframe, I haven't wanted to put it on just because I don't want to get scratched up. And they really 
helped me out. So shout out to Magnaflow. There will actually be a real video on installing the exhaust once we have the rear subframe done and we have all the suspension components buttoned up and then I'll undercoat the rear of the car, do the fuel tank, do the subframe, do the exhaust, get everything buttoned up in the back. We'll put Trackhawk wheels on it and that should be in the next week or so. So can't wait to put this exhaust on. I wish I could have put it on sooner, but I just didn't want to go through, you know, installing it, taking it off and something happening and get messed up. But shout out to the Magnaflow guys. They sent me carbon tips and this is the X mod exhaust, which is all V band. So I'm pretty much going to end the video here. I'm really happy with the progress that I'm making on the charger, even though sometimes it's a little bit small, um, you know, behind the scenes, you guys aren't seeing me build a subframe. I've really, it's a tedious process and I've kind of got burnt out filming it because I think you guys can only watch so many subframe videos. So hopefully we'll get that thing, or not hopefully, but we'll get that thing on this car in the next week or so. And then we can fi finally button up the front and just go from there. But I'm really happy to have all this ducting and air chiller and AC lines and all that stuff complete in the front because that's one less thing I have to worry about after we do the subframes we could do the front subframe then we could just drop all the drivetrain directly in this thing and not have to worry so i'm gonna end the video here if you like these videos make sure to click the subscribe button throw a thumbs up throw a comment below as always see you guys next time